Wow, what a snap. Upstairs. Back and through. He just got a slink one out there. It's tipped off. He's all up the middle. He's got, He's got Ten, room. Five. Touchdown, Kyle. Time, no pressure. He's going to go to the end zone. Touchdown, Milford Eagles. Johnny Miller over the middle. He's got Mancini Jackson over Mancini into the end zone. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Football on ICRC TV Sports. Tonight we're emanating from Loveland High School where the Miamisburg Vikings have made the trip down from the Southern Dayton area to take on the Loveland Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Glenn Olson joined in the booth by Frank Edwards. Dean Lowry is on hand with another crew ready to bring you all this exciting OHSAA varsity football action as we're just about to get underway from Miamisburg. Should be a good game, Frank. Yeah, you know, it's with the weather implements both first two weeks here in Ohio and the Southwest it, District right now, it's been tough because you know a lot of games have been getting canceled, but this is a big game for both schools. Love them coming in. Need to try to get their first W and Miamisburg hot start 2-0. Loveland did win the toss, elected to receive, and they immediately coughed the football up on the return. So not the start that a struggling Loveland football team needed. They came into this game tonight 0-2, having lost a close game last week at Lebanon, a game that was not affected by weather, unlike many in the tri-state area, but then were beat soundly the week before. So Mary, or excuse me, Miamisburg. I yeah. said Marymount last night, so I'm going to call him Marymount all night. Miamisburg set to take over on their first offensive position with a very short field, first and 10 from the Loveland 30 yard line. Take a look at the replay. There you see the return. It's fielded about the 10 yard line. But then his return man gets up into traffic. The ball squirted out. Didn't have it tucked away. You know, when it's wet, that's one of the things coaches, I guarantee said before. So that's a handoff In this for direction. Zion Lewis. Interesting fact about this game tonight, we're expecting both teams to run a wing T offense. Steve Ch Chanel, who for you high school football buffs may know was a longtime coach at Edgewood before being ousted, spent a year at Middletown and then took over in Miamisburg. Um, he is now, uh, that was 2012, so he's in year six of his campaign at Miamisburg, known for running that wing T. And of course, Fred Cranford of Loveland, known for it as well. One thing we're expecting to see is Miamisburg to throw the ball a lot tonight, Frank. Hand off up the middle, big hole to Just advance the football down to the five yard line. Apologize and do, we're in a tight box here at the Loveland. Yeah. Definitely have views that we're gonna be using. So for a little late on it, it's because of where we're positioned. So it's John Yerkins who gets the first carry. 12 carries, 79 yards, averaging just under 40 a game. About seven yards a carry, has a long of 25 and a touchdown to his credit. First and goal from the Loveland six. You see a pretty wild shift up on the line. The quarterback is Tate Bongzi for Miamisburg. Oh, not even barely touched there until the second level there. They're gonna have to make sure they get better penetration. It's gonna be a long night for Loveland. Cyan Lewis with the carry. Second time he's touched the ball tonight. We're expecting him to see a lot of action tonight. See the blocking and missed tackle there, and he's already down to the two. It's this is where ball games are win, win and losses up front, and that, that's what Minesburg's going to come doing is pound the ball right now. It's like Ben Meckley had the initial contact, number 11 for Loveland. Second and goal from the four yard line. Gain of about two on that last play. As long as he's going to keep it himself. And he's into the end zone. There's the official indication it is a touchdown. So the short field pays off for the Vikings. Really They're able to find the end zone pretty easily on their first possession. Yeah, I mean, that's, you can see what the story of this ball game is going to be if they don't take control of that, that front line. Meisberg's doing a great job blocking up front. Has some returning starters and some returning first teamers too that I saw from the Guac website. So, I mean, this is a, it's a good team. We just beat Old Tangent. I know that was a playoff team last year, and so 
they do have Huber Heights Wayne next week, and I'm interested to see what they do the rest of the season because they, they definitely look like, from what I've seen these last few series, they can block and run the ball very well. That was Dillon. And the extra point try, Colin Dillon, number 26. Now 11 of 11 on his extra point tries on the season. So at the 10-25 mark, a four-yard touchdown run by Vongzi. Like you were saying before, maybe Loveland should have deferred it because that's how quick that turnover was, yeah. you know? Well, you and I were talking before we came on the air that you get so we're so conditioned now to seeing teams defer to the second half that it's kind of unusual. Interesting note to tonight's game, we were under about an hour lightning delay where there may have been a light drizzle at best, but the minute the lightning delay ended and the gates opened, the skies opened up, and you can see in that camera shot on your screen right now, the rain is falling down pretty good. So that definitely is going to have an impact on ball security in the special teams game tonight. There's C. Dillon set to kick it off again to Loveland, hoping for a better result on their second attempt. It's been Hamill and McElveen, the two most prominent return men, but there's been a rotating cast of characters back there for the Tigers so far this year, according to the UCC website. You can see the rain. It's actually steadily coming down a little harder now, too. Yeah. So. Well, still a good crowd on hand. It was supposed to be youth night tonight here for the youth football players and cheerleaders. Those events were canceled due to the uncertainty of the lightning delay, but still a good turnout here from both fans, especially the Miamisburg fans stuck around after essentially an hour drive down here from the southern Montgomery County area. So Loveland gets their first crack on offense. As Glenn pointed out, some they're going to be familiar with both their offenses. Handoff. Up the middle from Hamill to number 33, Kyle Whitaker. 34 carries, 183 yards, averaging just under 92 yards a game, about five and a half a carry, has a long of 52, but no touchdowns yet. Be a gain of two, he's gonna set up second and eight. Another quick handoff. We're going to see Loveland run the ball a lot tonight. They've not put up a lot of passing statistics in their first two games so yeah. far this year. That was number two, Liam Hamill. He's a good job getting outside, tied in there. The wing back did a nice job here. You see him blocking the pulling here. Just followed his blocker. It was a good job getting outside. Oh, almost lost the ball there. Nice job as he was shifting it to his outside hand as he headed toward the sideline. Almost coughed that one up. Right, and if it's not even the tackler causing the fumble, you're going to be in trouble. He Coach probably saw that from up the box, too. So it's first and 10 from Loveland's own 41. Lots of pre-snap motion. Mm. And stood up at the line and no room at all there. That's going to go for a loss of about two yards. You can see when there's no wideouts, you see how Minesburg brings in that defense. So it looks like, you know, they're bringing, they're stacking it up there. Gonna, they're gonna try to make this quarterback throw for Loveland. Trying to see what else kind of formation they're gonna get in here. Officially a loss of one brings up second and 11 for Riley Hamill and his offensive teammates. And so we've got a 44 right now. Run to the outside, cuts back to a gap in the middle. Gonna be brought down between the 48 and 49 yard line. That was Liam, ha Liam Hamill on the run. Four plays we've seen so far, two of them outside. It just seems almost the same as the last play he had for a good run, and then two plays inside, nowhere. So we're going to have to mix up some play calling here. Four different plays I've seen, it, or two different plays and four plays. Got to make sure they stay honest on play calling, but like you said, if they don't have a throwing quarterback, it's going to be tough. Can't run again to the right side. And he's going to get through. He's gone. Right. 20. 10, 5, they're not going to catch him. Touchdown for the Loveland Tigers. Liam Hamill's going to tote it in from just about midfield. They've seen a weakness there. Some Miamisburg is losing assignment because you've seen every run that's went outside on the right there. It's been actually good runs, and he broke that one without being touched. And all it is is they're pulling their tackle. Yeah, there you can see the ball was snapped just around midfield. So we're going to call that one a... 
approximately 50 yard touchdown run. Take 22 remaining in the first. Loveland needed that for sure. Good shot of number two, Liam Hamill. Picks up and it's good. So it's a tie ball game. All right, so some early offensive fireworks here from Tiger Stadium in Loveland, Ohio. Both teams have traded touchdowns, but Loveland with the more impressive drive thus far. Found some holes in the Miami's Burke defense they could exploit. So he'll be up for them coach up these coaches in the press box on the defensive side for Miamisburg to make sure they get someone outside to contain and because every outside run has been positive gains for Love on there. Well somewhat surprising the Miamisburg Vikings reside in the greater Western Ohio Conference or the Glock. They are 13th against the rush, but when you have 20 teams in a conference, that's a, a little bit misleading, I guess. So Definitely in the bottom half, uh, giving up 100, just under 140 yards a game on the ground. And gave up a good chunk of that average to Loveland on that last drive. So seven all. Set to kick off for Loveland. There you see number 87 on your screen. Curtis Fetter, he's a senior kicker. Said there's been a rotating cast of characters kicking the ball. A little bit of a squib is going to be fielded inside the 30, and I'll tell you why they squibbed that in just a minute. Zion Lewis, who you remember from Miamisburg for first drive. Has two kickoff returns this year, 108 yards, averaging 54, obviously, but one of them an 80-yard touchdown. Right. So they're going to avoid kicking the ball to Zion Lewis, number one tonight. Imagine we're going to see more of that squib as this game progresses. You know, the one thing with the squib, you want to make sure you get it squibbed at least the opposite side of where he's standing because, I mean, starting the ball on the 45 almost, that's a tough one. Yeah. It's going to be at the 43 officially. For Miamisburg, game all tied at 7, 8, 14, remaining in the opening quarter here from the Tiger Stadium. Big run up the middle, big hole. Crossing midfield. Boy, that was a run power, or power run by Yerkins. Brought they, down by Sean McElveen, a junior. Yeah, they could have had him there. I mean, that's a couple missed tackles. It's probably a hard body to put down. If you're Loveland, if you wrap him up, that's only a two-yard gain. So. Yep. Results in a gain of eight, though. Second and two. The ball now into Loveland Tigers territory at the 49-yard line. Boy, that, that hole up the middle is there every time. That's Yerkins. It's going to be a first down and more. See barrels inside the 34-yard line before he's brought down by a pack of Tigers. Yeah, they'd like to just give it that quick. As soon as they hike it, he's right there to get it. But what's ironic about this is Loveland tried to do that first couple times and they didn't get anywhere. But Minesburg's doing a great job going up the middle. But Loveland's doing a great job going outside. So battle of runs so far in this wet affair. Well, I think the weather may have something to do with that because, you know, looking at the preseason preview done by our colleagues at WDTN in Dayton, Coach Chanel said that Miamisburg was going to throw the ball a little bit more, but it's been all run. There's Zion Lewis. Zion Lewis the ball Brings it out to the 25-yard line. Also, that old saying, hey, if it ain't broken, no one, you know, don't fix it. If it's if they're running and getting chunks, just keep doing it. Connor Wasp at number 28 had to stop. You probably heard from our PA announcer who's next to us. I do want to extend our appreciation to the Loveland Athletic staff for letting us come in tonight for our maiden voyage for Loveland football. I believe it is for ICRC, at least in the four years I've been doing games. So, and we took up some space they're used to having. We appreciate that. Yerkins down. He's going to power inside the 15. He brought down near the 13-yard line, so that'll be a fresh set of downs for the Vikings. Well, some much needed cold air coming in with this cold front, Frank, after these week or so of 90 degree temperatures. Right. But unfortunately, 
Mother Nature, not so much of a football fan. I'll tell you the guy I really feel sorry for is whoever's in that Love and Tiger mascot outfit, because that's got to be hot, humid, and wet and heavy. <laughs> Yerkins again up the middle, coughs the football up. Loveland with a chance to fall on it near their own goal line. They indicate they have it, and there's the official word from the official. With wet football, yep. turnovers will happen. Yep. Well, Yerkins had just barreled his way down inside the five, and the jar jar was balled loose. You're going to see here on the replay. Look at that hole in the middle and just Popped out. Too. Yeah, nice, nice job tackle. going low by that Loveland defender who couldn't quite see the number. So, looked like Miamisburg had a pretty good drive set up, but Loveland defense rises to the occasion, forces a turnover. Uh, now they're going to have the ball deep in their own territory. Dylan Griffiths, we believe, in the 26. Force that turnover. Loveland's going to try the left side this time. and Good second effort there. Took three or four Vikings defenders. Bring them down. And we have an injured player on the field, it looks like. Slow to get up for Loveland, and there's going to be the stoppage. Injured player is number 33, Kyle Whitaker, for the Tigers. I believe that is someone they're not going to want to lose in the long term in this game. Whitaker, one of the running backs, has had three carries for 25 yards coming into this game, and also has caught a pass, so two-way player. Definitely don't want to lose someone like that, especially this early in the season, having got into conference play yet. Well, these games are so important for, you know, harping points, and especially the tough conferences are both in, so even if you start out with a rough start, if you have some quality wins, you can still sneak in there, but, you know, they're so important. Well, tough road to hoe for both of these teams last year. Loveland went one and nine. One and six in the ECC. Miamisburg four and six overall. Obviously both teams missed the playoffs. So there's the Tiger mascot. See already he's lifting up on that head or she could be trying to get some relief from the humidity. <laughs> could tell you it's humid in this press box. But um, yeah, both teams looking to get on the upswing. And there you see Whitaker being carted off, not able to put much weight no weight at all on that left leg. So I would think it's safe to say his night is done. And it's going to be next man up for Loveland on offense and defense. But Loveland, as we mentioned, with a close loss last week to Lebanon, 15 to 13 at Lebanon. So the defense has been giving Loveland opportunities. It's the offense that needs to rise the occasion, and they're doing it so far tonight. Going to go back to the right side. Ball carrier finds a hole to squirt through, give them a little bit of daylight back up against their own end zone, figuratively. See, they did a better job containing their Miamisburg. You can see number 23, that's his responsibility to make him cut back inside, so. Liam Hamill was the ball carrier, so now third and five. A little more room to work. Looks like the ball spotted at the eight yard line. We'll go back to a run right side that gap between the guard and tackle gonna be shy of the first down by at least a yard maybe two offensive line doing a decent enough job so far frank and creating some holes That's for, for this level and offensive down. attack nope so the first down i guess our angle is fooling us up here ready for that one that's going to be of a loss of about a yard okay so a loss of a yard sets up second and 11. we're just seeing the praises of the offensive line Loveland goes backwards a little bit Frank Oh, it's a fake pass, and now he is going to throw it. Whoa. Yeah, way over 
overshot his receiver. Odd situation there. It doesn't look like the quarterback and his intended receiver were on the same, same play there. That pass was intended for number 14, Remy George. George come into this game with three catches for 105 yards, 10.5 yards, excuse me. Actually, those were rushing statistics. Don't have them down for any receiving statistics. It's not on the same page there. Loveland going to spread it out a little bit. Not as tight of a formation as we've grown accustomed to so far. But they're going to try that right side again. And Miami's bird is ready for it. It's Liam Hamill with the carry again for the Tigers. Approaching the four-minute mark of the first quarter. All tied up at seven here. Friday Night Football on ICRC TV Sports. Glenn Olson and Frank Edwards with you from Loveland High School, from rainy Loveland High School. Loveland's going to punt the football away. Punter is in his own end zone. There's whistles on the play. It was a clean snap, maybe a tad low. Either a delay game or movement, looks like. Oh, it's going to be against Miami. It's not going to be wow. enough to matter. Coach Coach Fred Cranford wants to gamble. Here you hear the official indication from our PA announcer offside against the Vikings. So now Baldwin's punter will be inside his own five. A little bit of a better snap that time, oh, but man. a bad kick. Not a good kick at all. See, the offside actually helped him. <laughs> He's gonna, yeah, gonna sail out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Well, another short field for Mammysburg. We'll see what they can do with it here. They'll take over. Go back and take a look at the punt there. And you can see just didn't keep the leg straight. Maybe off the side of his foot. There you see the rain continues to fall as, heavily. As you were stating with Miami's Berg schedule, four and six, but they had, with their schedules looking last year, I mean, six of their teams went to the playoffs and had some deep runs, you oh, know? Yeah. So yeah. sometimes that's the case of having a tough schedule yeah. and tough league opponents, too. Conference, yeah. There's a pitch out to Zion on the outside. Nice cutback. He's going to be stood up on that cutback and brought down around the original line of scrimmage. Best defensive effort so far there by Loveland at the line of scrimmage. Take a look on the replay. Nice pitch. Maybe a little bit of a hold there by Miamisburg. He released that. He saw the ball carrier coming his way, so he didn't draw the attention of the official. But as soon as he released that, set up Lewis to be tackled. It's like he couldn't make up his mind if he wanted to keep going right or left and turned out to get tackled for a loss there right at the line for only a small game. The second down, they're going to go right back to Lewis. He's looking for a hole on the right side. It does open up. Good second effort. As he advances the ball out to the 40-yard line. Inside the 40 to the 39 officially. Third and three for Miamisburg. Definitely not a situation in this rain where you want to attempt field goals tonight. Colin Dillon, one of two as long as 30. Well, outside of that range at the moment. Yeah, that's for any level tough kid. Always an adventure in the high school. I've seen long ones. Jerkins. Going to be close to a first down, but I think he got it. Up on the play by JT Pop for the Loveland Tigers. So, so far, we've only seen one passing attempt by both teams here in this first quarter. It's been a similar, both teams run like Glenn was talking about, they both run similar offenses. Well, if anything good comes out of that hour of rain delay, sit in and lock in, which you can tweak your offensive game plan. We know the rain is coming. And here back more towards the run, as I said, Miamisburg have been throwing the ball a lot this season. Not tonight in this rain. There's a good second effort. Gets the ball up to the 25-yard line. 
Yeah, QB sneaks ain't supposed to last 10 yards, so someone needs to get aggressive up there on that line. Great effort there by Runner. First and 10 from the 25. Williamsburg finding some things that are working for them here tonight. They can just hang on to the wet and slippery football. Good job there. Jerkins carries for Miamisburg. Picks up about three yards. Maybe two. Nice thing about a lot of running plays is you get a quick clock. We're approaching 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Good point. When you don't have a throwing team, I mean, this, this game is going to go quick. for that after the hour rain delay. Keeper by the quarterback fakes the handoff. He's going to advance it all to the 20-yard line. Loveland's indicating that the football was fumbled. No indication yet from the official. But we'll see and they're going to rule that the runner was down. By the Loveland players, they thought they had it, but as the officials, they said he was down. And at this level, there is not any review, so. Yeah, Loveland and Faithful not happy with that. They thought that it was a fumble, but nonetheless, at the end of one, it's Miamisburg seven and Loveland seven. Gonna step away for a moment. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. B, make the best of it. C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Welcome back to Friday Night Football on ICRC TV Sports. Glenn Olson and Frank Edwards with you from the press box here at Loveland High School. Second quarter just about set to get underway. We're all tied at seven. Miamisburg maintains possession after a near fumble. And they're steadily driving further into the red zone. The ball spotted. Well, they are in the, officially at the 18-yard line. Kind of hard to see through these tinted windows. Or wooden walls. <laughs> Joey Yerkin on the carry again. JT Pop with another tackle for the Tigers. There's a replay here just pulling around number 25. <laughs> like that, you lose a minute a game. <laughs> one play. Can make it home for the restaurant closes at this rate. But. Oh, you guys had a delay? No. <laughs> All running plays. Jerkins with the carry again. Tries the right side that time. Good for a couple of yards. Looks like it's gonna Bring up about a five yard situation. Good attack by the Loveland defensive line there, right at the line of scrimmage. 
good defensive stand. They've, that's one thing I'll say about their red zone defense so far this game. They've done a great job causing a turnover. Third and five. They've split a receiver out to the top of the formation. Maybe some offensive confusion. He's trying to create that, but John Yerkins with the carry, number 23, two Yerkins on the roster, John and Joey, Joey number 25. Try to make sure we clarify that moving forward. So fourth and one. Fourth and a short one, Frank. Yes, it, that man, they're definitely going for it. Um, maybe just load up Tate Bonzi. He's a big guy, number nine, the quarterback, and indeed they do. Gets a good push from behind, so depending on the spot, should be a first down for Miamisburg. Should be first and goal. Yep, and there's the indication from the officials. Waving the chain gang down. Two guys lay their sticks down. And one guy has to work the rest of this drive. You see the Miamisburg coaching staff on the far sideline here. Tiger Stadium. I wouldn't be surprised if this ball doesn't go up the middle here a few couple times. Yeah, no longer they're that close. Hmm. Second layer of Lovins defense is in the end zone. Big handoff up the middle. That's John Yerkins or Joey Yerkins goes in the end zone pretty much untouched until it didn't matter. Nice job by the offensive line of the Vikings that time, Frank, opening up that hole. How easy that was. I'm almost wanting to go for two here just because, I mean, he wasn't touched, like you said. Yeah, it really wasn't until it was already in the end. His first contact. And everybody in the stadium knew that that play was coming. Yep, so the holder is number 11, Drew Barry. Kicker is Colin Dillon, who we mentioned, now 11 for 11. Good kicker. Yeah, that was pretty good too. A nice hold. Nice snap, nice hold, and a nice kick despite the downpour. Just raining in sheets and buckets out there. So with 9.03 for me, yeah, there's a good shot of that rain. 9.03 remaining in the second quarter. That was number 25. Joey Yerkins. They called a three yard touchdown run. A couple turnovers by both teams this first half, you know. So 14 7, love them. It's got to feel good a little bit right now. Try to get another score here. Yeah, love them defensively in the, the UCC overall defense. They're, they're only third during the final non conference week, giving up 275 and a half yards a game, fourth rushing and passing, giving up less on the pass, more on the rush. But I think it's just a reflection of the teams they're playing. And then, however, the points, they're way down at fifth. If you look on the website, it says six, but Withrow's not recorded any stats. It's a deep kick. Ball carrier tried to bring it out to the left. Ran into a pack of Viking defenders out there. It's a great commodity to have when you have a good kicker, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Puts points on the board and puts other teams deep in territories. Yeah, so first and 10 from the 25. It's actually the 23 correction. There you see, good student section is hung in there. Mm -hmm. Did a blackout tonight. This is the home opener for the Tigers, so I don't think that body paint has made it through this driving rain. Nope. Probably the parents are happy about that. They don't have to worry about that in the car. Or a lot of laundry at home today. Do <laughs> <laughs> one. <laughs> nice run. Pumping out to the outsides, Liam Hamill who found a, a seam down the sideline, another big gainer. Hamill came into this game averaging about four and a half a carry. He's definitely adding to that figure tonight. Dances that football all the way out to 45 yard line. A little pitch left here you see and just beat, beats him outside. Good stiff arm here to get away from one tackle. Not really what opened up. That seam was a stiff arm before he was forced out of bounds. We're gonna go right back to him up the middle. 
one thing that's not there tonight right now for Loveland is that up the middle. As you can see, they've been stuffed every time up the middle. Done a great job outside. But I don't know if that's part of where Minesburg got some good defensive tackle in there clogging it up, and that's probably my, my bet that it is because someone's doing a good job in there. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments that Miamisburg makes. They do try to fan that front line out a little bit more and maybe opens up that middle, trying to take right. away those edge runs. Keep an eye on that, especially after halftime. High snap. It's going to be good for about a yard. Himmel gets about a yard, but Riley Hamill was lucky to haul that snap in. It looks quite high to see here on the replay to go way upstairs to get that. Right. Hands off the see, this is interesting see what the play call is on Loveland. I mean, it's third and ten. You know, it's not. I can't see a run working, so got to have something to play book here. Single receiver split to the top of the formation on the right side. Hand goes in motion. It's going to be some trickeration. Rollout has to release it before he's ready. Pass falls incomplete. All they need is a couple more rollouts. Maybe a guy cutting across underneath there because I, mean, hey, I like the effort. Nice try anyway. You see on the rollouts, protection broke down. He had to scramble. Never really got his feet set. Released the ball before he was ready. And the ball came in well short of the intended receiver even with the diving effort. Now it's punt time. If they kick it away from Lewis, a little bit of a low snap. Punter recovers. Better punt this time. Yeah, much better Fair punt. Catch. Fair catch is going to be called for at the 19-yard line by number 25, Joey Yerkins. The worst field position of the night for Miamisburg to start on offense. Be at their own 19. What Coach Steve Chanel and that blue T offense can dial up as the rain continues to pour. Usually some of these teams like to do them quick up the middles and then get you when they think you're going with the middle and get that outside misdirection. That's been waiting for here soon, but the up the middle's been working so good, why change it? <laughs> well, the ball is spotted on the near hash, so that means the wide side of the field is top of the formation to your left. Fake to Lewis. As long as he rolls out with it, he's going to keep it. First down and more. No flags on the Designed field. Designed QB uh, sweep there. Yeah. Great, great run by Vongzi. Came into this game, 20 carries. Excuse me, 11 carries for 22 yards. He's going to add to his rushing stats on that nice run. Wasn't touched until he got good 30 yards and he just drove out of, yeah. out of bounds there. Yeah, it's just forced out of bounds as his blocker released. Block on number 28, Riley Terry of Miamisburg. Forced him out of bounds. First and 10, we're gonna go back up the middle. Nice big gain. He's great at breaking that first tackle. Jerkins, the number 23 variety, John, on that carry. Got about seven yards, called second and three. They rolled under seven minutes, now approaching 6.40. Miamisburg with a 14 to seven lead in the second quarter. Bones is gonna keep it, good push up the middle. Breaks it. Not inside the 20 yard line. As I mentioned, Bongsy didn't have a whole lot of carries coming into this game. 11 carries for 22 yards, so it's five yard or five carries a game, five and a half essentially. And boy, that that option's really opened up tonight. Loveland's not seen a lot of that on film, and Bongsy taking advantage of it. Making it look easy. First and ten. Ball spotted at the 30-yard line of the Loveland Tigers. Six minutes to go here in this first half. You see one of those shifts. 
See if they go away from that. Nope, gonna go up the middle to Lewis. Lewis advance the ball up inside the 15. Shoestring tackle, because if he didn't get that shoestring tackle, he's still running. Here's a replay here, you see. Well, obviously an artificial surface here. Loveland High School still can get a little slick in the rain, especially when you get buckets of it like we're experiencing right now. Everybody out there is driving a press box other than sweating. <laughs> Pick your poison. Yeah, I'll take the <laughs> Hunting in the rain would be no fun. It kind of screw up your spot sheets. As long as they have another keeper up the middle. Gonna advance it up to the 11-yard line. Back on the play for Vanderhorst, number 58 of Loveland. Third and one. They go back to Vonzi again on that power up the middle. It's working so far. As you said earlier, the, the Tiger is getting soggier <laughs> as, the, as the second quarter goes on. I hope there's not a home soccer game tomorrow. That one's going to need a couple days to try out. Ooh. <laughs> crew's going to need a couple days to dry out. And do, they do like to go back to Longsy and there's some extracurriculars after the play. So number 43. Magnus Bird loses home to Kale Parkport. Parkport. So it's first and goal from Loveland seven. Miamisburg with an opportunity to make this a two possession game, Frank. Yeah, you know, and with so much running, like you said, that it's only a seven point game. And if you probably look at the yard difference right now, Miamisburg has a lot of yards. Although Loveland did have that one run breakout, but Miamisburg needs to put some more points on the board for how many first downs they've got. We'll go back to Zion Lewis, who's going to be stood up near the line of scrimmage. Looks like he may have gotten up to the five or the six, maybe a gain of one, possibly two. There you see, boy, just good penetration that time. But ben Wesley, number 44, came in and wrapped up Lewis until re excuse me, reinforcements could arrive to finish it off. the four minute mark of the first half. Taking their time. It started looking like a, an eye formation and then split out. Zion Lewis on the left side has a hole. He'll go into the end zone. Essentially untouched for a touchdown. There's a lot of Loveland defenders laying on the field. But Lewis found his way into the end zone. See here just all the blocking. Yep. Pull up the line and he just walks in. Bully from the right side of the line coming over is what it looked like to me. And Lewis able to utilize that and march right into the end zone. 20 to 7, Miamisburg, 356 remaining. Four yard run by Zion Lewis. Loveland got good penetration that time, but the extra point is good nonetheless. 356, second quarter. Oh, four yard touchdown run by Zion Lewis. The extra point is, of course, good. 21 to 7, Miamisburg. What's Loveland going to have to do now? I mean, Miamisburg starting to take advantage of some of their weapons. We saw a lot more of Vongsley than the stat sheet indicated. Who would have seen? He's the quarterback. We didn't see a lot of the Yurkins on that last drive. It was Vongsley and, and Zion Lewis, the primary ball carriers. Well, you know, even if you take away that big saving turnover tackle right before a touchdown, it would be 28-7 right now. So they're going to have to have some halftime adjustments here. Like I said, at the very beginning, it would be a long, long night if they don't stop stop this run. And they've done a good job themselves running, but you've got to stop. That's the old name of the game there. Because Miami's bird gets the ball at half, too. Oh, well, yeah. Again, that, that not deferring comes back to... Great ugly head again. So Loveland essentially needs to get a score in this possession. Shallow kick is going to be fair caught at the 24 yard line. Well, Maybe 
by the time we get into conference play next week. For, for most teams, GMC, of course, started conference play tonight. A couple of big games. Colerain and ICRC Community Princeton. Oak Hills and ICRC Community Mason. Getting things going in the GMC. Always Mother Nature might, <laughs> might cooperate next week. Right. First two weeks it hasn't. Loveland finds a hole up the middle. JT Pop gets a carry. I believe that's his first carry of the year. He just got an update. Corrine leading Princeton by a surprising score, 20 to 13 at the half. Not surprising that Corrine was leading, but somewhat surprising that it's that narrow of a game. So Mike Daniels and the resurgence. Seems to be working over Princeton this year after a rough start last year. And that's going to be early movement flags all over the field. I believe that's just our what, second penalty of the game. Had the encroachment of Miami's Burton. That's going to be a false start on Loveland. So that's helped keep the clock rolling as well. Right. Lack of laundry on the field. Fortunately for all the Loveland parents, there's going to be a lot of laundry <laughs> tonight after this rain and body paint of the students. All you can do is smile. That young lady right there in the middle of your shot above Ramesburg, that's all you can do is smile. Well, when it's you're, on, when like you're on top of the scoreboard, the smiles can... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, Loveland's going to lose several yards on that one. Play was blown up from the get-go. Left side of the line just didn't hold up. Interesting to see when Ramesburg starts calling these timeouts because they don't throw that much either, so they're going to need a little bit of time to move that ball up. But they do have a great kicker, so they, it's not like they have to go far because he's a great, got a great leg. It's Remy George who's blown up in the backfield. Loveland's going to take their time here. Don't blame them. So it's the NFL where you got dry clothes in the equipment box, do you? And the coaches can't go in and change it after them like they do in the NFL or college, right? Right. <laughs> oh, they just ran into each other, and the quarterback yep. just ran. That was a busted play there. Yep, so get back for a gain of maybe a yard. One thing he did good was he stayed in bounds to keep the clock going because Miami's going to probably have to burn time out here. No indication of being concerned about doing it yet. And now maybe they're just going to save him. Right. Let Loveland uh, continue to run the football and run the clock. And, hmm. Heck, at this point, it's what? Fourth down, they've got to punt the football away. So. Low snap, fielded nicely, much better kick. Best kick of the night. It's going to catch Yerkins out of position a little bit. It's going to take a Tiger roll back to the 30-yard line. So good change of field position there. You got the lucky. Loveland Tigers. And you seen how he, if he would have put his knee down to get that ball, that ball would have been down where that kick was. That's a great job by taking that in the wet at that. That's a good snap because that could have been a disaster. Great job by the punter. Yeah, much better punt for the first one we saw in this game. Twenty-one to seven, one fifty-one remaining. Miamisburg. Long field, trying to add to their two possession lead. Uh-oh, pitched it out to Lewis who has trouble hauling it in. He's gonna be brought down at the 25 yard line. So that's gonna be a loss of five. So kind of an odd looking pitch from Vongzi. is it wasn't a clean pitch, kind of came in end over end. It almost looked like it was gonna be a halfback type pass how it was developing, yeah. I'm not sure because he was way out wide there. Sure was. Don't know what, that was just going to be a developed pitch run either, though. You're not sure. Hey, heck of a time to call it. He waited. He up a lot of yards with not a lot of clock, so. Right. Fortunately, it does count as a run, so the clock keeps, keeps rolling. Huh. And Miamisburg yeah. now elects to take a timeout with 106 remaining. Which is kind of weird because they should have, if you're going to want to call that timeout, they should have done it 20 seconds yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, yeah. that play probably was blown up about 20 seconds to go according to the game clock. So, yeah, you wasted a lot of time there 
deciding to take a timeout this late in the game. Because they got a great kicker. I mean, I'm right now in this clip of what I've seen that they're blocking. Their QB can run and all. I mean, I, I can see him throwing, but he's not throwing it tonight. Man, he's he's not needed to. Yeah, <laughs> but man, this would be the time he would have to. Yeah, Colin Dillon is the field goal kicker. He's one of two on his field goal tries coming into this game with a long of 30. You can tell by his extra points, it's definitely got some leg to him. They have some yardage to make up if they even want to think about the field. But to your point, it might have made it been a halfback pass to try to chew up a lot of yards in a hurry. Interested to see these next two play calls here, especially this one, because this is this is definitely a design pass. If, it, if not, they're going to be content with what they have. So Lewis is going to move up into that slot position. Empty backfield, man in motion. It's going to be a handoff to number 23, John Yerkins. Gets just out of bounds. Had three receivers on the left and just ran them out. Offensive line held up. Good block. Out there on the edge by number 26, Colin Dillon. Open up the sideline and allow Kirkins to get out of bounds. One minute, exactly. Now they don't let defense, they're going to call timeout, yeah. defensive timeout here. Wow. Well, the good news is it's an opportunity to get everybody on the same page of music. The good news is it gives Miami Bird a chance to do the same. It's been the longest part of the games this time out. It's been such a fast moving game. Yeah, about 50 minutes or so in the last time of this first half, I believe. Announcement being made here. It's homecoming week for Loveland next week. Be home again against Withrow as they enter Eastern Cincinnati Conference play. Homecoming parade in downtown Loveland, followed by the Loveland Strong Festival. The festival will be marked to commemorate the rebirth of downtown Loveland after the fire 15 or 16 months ago. I'm quite sure some of those businesses are going to be ready for it, but downtown Loveland will be ready for it for sure. Hopefully, the weather cooperates. Good people in Loveland. Not happening down that level in the last couple of years. Mixed use development that came in with residential up top and street level retail and restaurants. Right. Brought a lot of excitement to downtown Loveland. A lot of parking things too. Kind of traffic, but still Sounds like a council still. meeting type of issue <laughs> there, for sure. Just right. still beautiful in downtown Loveland. It could be fixed. Beautiful place to come hang out on the weekend. A little bit of everything, plus the bike trail running right through downtown. Too. Back to football. Didn't turn in for the Chamber of Commerce much, did you? <laughs> Longsley's going to roll out, keep it. Flag comes in Ooh. from the official in the backfield. Boy, that's a good lick put on him, huh? Yeah. Number See that being a holding. See that being declined here. Maybe. Drew Vonderhorst, yeah, that was holding all right. You saw it just to the left of Longsley there. So he took a look and a hold. Decline. Yep, so that would be fourth down. Mm -hmm. Give him another chance. I tend to agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give him another crack on the offense. Back deep. Oh, Loveland, number nine, Natron Webster, number 24. Breckman Shakely, timeout called on the field. <laughs> Have to get these timeouts in now. Yeah, they don't even need them. Players and your officials are like, come on, man. That's a clock <laughs> Yeah. Try off. So Webster, number nine of Loveland, three punt returns. To 11 yards averages out to just under four yards, so the long is six. Mm -hmm. Not seeing a lot of excitement in the punt return game. 
for the Tigers so far this year. We'll see what that looks like. Colin Dillon handle the punting duties. Something else these coaches have to worry about tonight, trying to keep this football dry. Good luck with that. Well, it looks like the rain, I mean, it was coming down harder. It's not as coming down. It's still raining. Though. Still coming down hard enough, I think. <laughs> the wind has picked up. It's Ooh. Oh, nearly deflected. Might have got just a fingernail on that, but it's going to take another Miamisburg bounce to the 21 yard line. So after being nearly blocked, partially deflected at best, ends up being a pretty good change of position, field position for Miamisburg. It's 40 seconds for the Lovell Tigers to travel. 77 yards. Oh, uh, why risk a turnover? Right. Just deep in your own territory after you just held on and denied Miamisburg an opportunity to score. Campbell's going to roll out, lets it fly. Boy, there's some holding on that receiver. Some hand checking going on as he was tricking down the left side. Nice try, though, because if he would have had another foot on him, it could have been a. Nothing wrong with the, the effort there. Not at all. Kind of receiver. Kind of catch the number on that. His jerseys kind of roll up and obscure that second number sometimes. Good play call. But like I said, I thought the receiver might have been held a little bit outside of that. Wow. They're taking zone. a chance taking that run. I mean, yeah. all it's going to take is a ball pop out and they're down 20. Or yeah, now you're back to the 11-yard line. So, not sure why you don't just fire one down again. Right, because if, if you pick it off back there, you know. But. I don't know if you got a punt, punt. It's better than putting the ball on the ground inside the 20-yard line, right? Mm -hmm. We're just going to let it go, and we're going to go to halftime here. And that will do it. So at halftime, the visiting Miami's first Vikings is 21. Love the Tigers 7. Then I'll see Frank Edwards with you from Loveland High School. We're going to step away and take a break here at halftime. We'll be back in the second half. Just a few. Kevin, I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org.
welcome back to the Loveland High School Landing for Vikings. by the Loveland Stats crew. I guess we shouldn't be surprised considering the score. Neither team has completed a pass. In fact, Miamisburg has not attempted one at all. But when you look at the rushing yards, it's 219 net yards for Miamisburg and just 105 for Loveland. That's translating to a huge difference in the time of possession as well. Really giving Miamisburg a huge advantage in this game so far. Yeah, if you take away that long run by Loveland's that touchdown, I mean, it would be even lower than that. I mean, obviously, I know, so. Miami's birds in the ball at the half here, so it's a must that Loveland gets a three and out or at least somehow stop here because one thing Miamisburg has done, as Glenn just stated, is control the clock with their first down and their rushing. Yeah, really not uh, a whole lot jumps out at me from the stat sheet other than just the difference in, in net yardage. So we're just about set to get the second half underway here from Loveland High School. Where he's happy to set to handle the kicking duties for Loveland. See again if they try to kick that away from Zion Lewis, number one, who'll be at the top of the shot. Yerkin is on the near hash. And they do elect to squib it into the middle of the formation. Oh, nice return. That time by Amy's by Amesburg. I think that was Drew Barry. He's 6'3, just reached up and plucked that ball out of the middle of the air. So sure did. that size came in handy there in the middle of the special teams formation. They're gonna have great field position to start this half. Yeah, so think back to that, that for, first series. Loveland wanted the ball, fumbled in that first possession. Miamisburg's been able to move the ball effectively for the most part. It's still a two-possession game, though. Loveland shows blitz. It's going to be a gain of about seven yards, maybe six. Miamisburg off to a good start here in the second half. Let's hand off to Zion Lewis. Good hole there and a great tackle by one of the Loveland defensive linemen. The rain has subsided. We'll see if the passing game opens up a little bit more in the second half. The damage may be done to these footballs. Well, they tried to run right up in the middle of the pack and Loveland just stood it up. On the left side of the line, there's some pushing and shoving after the play. Good job there by Loveland. That was their Achilles heel in the first half. That was number 23, John Yerkins, on the carry for the Vikings. Third and five here, an opportunity for Loveland to make a defensive stand. Battle of adjustments here. See what the Capes has done differently. Miamisburg is going to take a timeout. They're not liking what they're seeing out of the defensive long, defensive front presented by Loveland at this point. As I said during that halftime, Loveland said what was the biggest thing was you know, the telling them in that first half, and it was that run right up the middle. And I think that's what they've talked about at halftime. And Miamisburg, that's their go-to punch, so they're, they're not going to talk it over and see if, if the blocking assignments will change or they're going to actually go to a different type of run formation. You see how many different options they do have because they had big jumps right now. Loveland did a great job of making adjustments here so far in this first series. Anyway. Well, and it's just a situation where you got to pick your poison. Do you want to try to stop? Amesburg deep with a lot of offensive weapons. I think it's a great timeout. You know. so the ball is at Loveland's 46 yard line. Third and five. Shift in the formation to the left side. Loveland shows blitz and backs out of it. That's going to be Zion Lewis. Takes the handoff in the backfield, has the edge. First down and more. Hurdles a defender. 
It's going to be brought down inside the 35 yard line. It'll be marked down at the 32. So a great run after the timeout. Zion Lewis showing tremendous ability there, Frank. Yeah, it was a nice cutback because he almost was tackled as you see in replay here. Just missed there, an arm tackle, and there's another missed tackle. He just good, nice cut up and got an extra couple yards, big first down. And there's the hurdle, and that defender that he hurdled reached up and grabbed a handful of shoelace to cause him to lose his balance, or it could have been a lot worse. So the Vikings on the march here early in the second quarter. As we approach the 10-minute mark. Yerkins, number 23 variety. That's John Yerkins. Just continuing to pound that middle, Frank. Yep. And boom, they'll catch on the edge. Right. Miamisburg really not operating with a tremendous sense of urgency so far here in the second half. Seemed like the play calls were coming in a little quicker back in the first half. Maybe by design to keep the ball away from them. Well, you know, that's you're winning. You keep the ball, you know, it's easy W. Go, Tron! Baldwin again showing blitz up the middle and maybe jumped into the neutral zone. There's flags and whistles. Could be a false start on Miamisburg. Uh, big penalty there. Well, Miamisburg reacted to the pressure that Lovell was showing up the middle. And I believe it was one of the line black backers stepped up to blitz. There you see coach Steve Chanel not real happy with his offensive charges after that. As like mentioned at the top of the show, Chanel, a veteran of Edgewood. Built a very successful, successful Cougars program up there. Or taking over about six years ago at Miamisburg. Bumsy right works the pass, right rolls there, out to his right, lets Roll. it fly. Has a Man. receiver, but it is tipped. And that was probably a touchdown saving tip by number 24, Charlie. Or Shacky, excuse me. Fucking Shacky, he's just a sophomore. First passing attempt tonight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Receiver was open, but the defender just reached up and got fingertips on it. There you see it's all great defensive effort there. The coaches will like seeing the film study tomorrow. But it does stop the clock. 8.54. Lewis, left side. Not able to quite get through. It's an indication of a fumble. From the Loveland sideline, a Loveland defenders, but no indication forthcoming from the men in the stripes whose opinion matters. Looks like you said earlier, the damage may be done to these footballs, Frank. Kind of slippery. Right. After that driving rain in the first half, the rain has subsided, but it's going to take a while for that porous leather to dry out. down. Miamisburg gambling. Vongsley back to pass. Hesitates. Fires a dart across the middle. And it's a uh, struggle for control after the fact, but it was hauled in by Drew Barry. And that will be our first pass completion of the night. Barry, the leading receiver coming into this game. Seven grabs for 65 yards. Long at 22 and one touchdown through the air. Great patience by Longsley that time. I saw him pump fake a few times, waiting on something to open up, and he fires that dart across the middle. So the fourth down gamble works. First and ten for Miami Spur. Helmets fly. <laughs> off after that, unfortunately, for Loveland. It's Remy George, number 14, like to set a play out. Game five, second and five. You can just see by this drive here how much time they took off, just this yeah. drive by itself. Break 
It's a huddle. They're going to spread it out again to the bottom, one to the top. So definitely the noticeable adjustment, the passing attack now that the rain has subsided. They're going to go back to Zion Lewis on a handoff there. Going to try the right side and right side, excuse me, get stood up and maybe get a yard. Well, we talked about in the first half, Coach Nell said they wanted to throw the ball a little more this year, and the rain prevented that, but definitely, definitely seen that more evident here in the second half so far. Third and three officially. Longsley over the sideline getting the play call from his head coach. Tighten it up again. Zion Lewis up the middle gets a good push down inside the five yard line. So they'll be in the shadow of the goal. Lewis took the ball and just kept those feet chopping as the coaches say, Frank. Yep. First and goal for Miamisburg from Loveland's two yard line. An opportunity to take a three possession lead here about halfway through the second for the third quarter, excuse me. And there it is. Longsley on the keeper. Call drink of water to try to bring down Frank. Listed at 6 2, 2 15. Right. I mean, Loveland did a good job that first series there, but that pass completion caused him to get that first down. And oh, okay. He got through that pile of up here. Yeah. That kid is amazing. I might just run that play a couple times when it's first down because I've seen him do that a couple times now. Juice the clock. Dylan in for the kick. Stay perfect on the year, 14 for 14. Lambersburg fans knocking on wood. Yeah. Right for that. Yeah, well, couldn't get much better than that. You burned about half the quarter away. You opened up the passing attack a little bit to give the Loveland defensive staff something to think about. Exactly. That's exactly what they wanted to do. That's what they're doing. I couldn't say it better. What do you expect we're going to see out of Loveland offensively in this half? Adjustments, Frank. Well, that's here's the dilemma right now. I mean, you see how much time and what they do. I mean, if they have, if they are going to run, it's better be hurry up run because and get big chunks and try to get some points on the board because as soon as Miami's get Miamisburg gets that ball back, you see how much time they took off. They just need long drives to end the game. I mean, they don't even need to score. Anymore, you know, that's what a, they're just yeah. clocks the enemy right now. That's the attack is nice, but it stops the clock. So, see what kind of balance. A bit of a shallow kick, nearly muffed. And down around a 21-yard line. Number 41, Austin Loader. He's a sophomore. A bit of a shallow kick by Miami's bird, trying to keep it out of the hands of the skill players of the Loving Tigers. Right. First and ten for Loving. Their first possession of the second half comes just about halfway through the second or the third quarter. There's a pitch that's going to be blown up in the mm -hmm. backfield. Loveland's going the wrong way right off the bat. Yep. Liam Hamill. Oh, carry, so it's not a whole lot there. You just see here, just gets blown up at the line. And yeah, that penetration right yeah. there about it's at 78. Mm -hmm. Just barreled through that line. Colin Alcorn It's a senior, 6'1, 235. I don't have much of an answer for that. Second and a bunch. Not a whole lot there. Maybe a happy yard. It's just tough. You know, got to open up. I know it's so you got to open up a playbook here. I mean, it's, you're down, and you see by the body language right now, bodies are getting aching. 
Hey, man, Hamill's hurting a little bit. I mean, when you run the ball all the time, that's a lot of smash mouth, you know? Coach Cohen had play. That's what the offensive skill guys would say. Going to try the right side. Just Again, just don't he's going to escape from pressure and running the wrong way, and he's going to be brought down inside the five yard line. So. That's what not to do. Liam Hamill a little bit frustrated after that play. You can see, you can see the way he pitched the ball away. I'm frustrated by the play calling. I mean, I just it, it, bad a series of a couple plays there. I mean, the first time you thought I would learn the lesson. I mean, I'm I've seen him throw a couple times. They looked okay throwing. I'm I don't know if it's because it's a young team or you tell me what grade are these guys in because it just I don't understand it. Yeah, there's a bad punt to boot. It's going to be fielded at Loveland's own 40. Great, great tackle there. By Trent Williamson, number 31. He's a freshman, so making his impact known on special teams. Right. Yeah, great job by the freshman. Got to find a bright spot, spot somewhere. Miami's <laughs> return man didn't even get ahead of steam going on that one. So. But a short field, a familiar situation for the Loveland Tiger defense against this Vikings offense. The ball is spotted. Loveland's own 36-yard line. So just a bad offensive series. Only took about two minutes, not even two minutes off the clock. Loveland defense makes its presence known. Brian Lewis. Had nowhere to go on the left side. Tackles by Natron Webster and okay. Isaiah Atkins. I guess that's the one point right now is Miami, Miami's Berg's offense is a little tired. They just came right back on the field after driving it the length of the field. So it might be the one positive to be having a three and out and going 20 yards backwards. Tick, tick, tick down, right? Yeah. You They're okay seconds. with it. Put it that way. We're already taking about 30 seconds off the game clock. Let's see. Put that. Ball snapped around 4.15 or so. Play fake. Long as he rolls out, lets it fly off his back foot. The pass is complete. To number 35, Grant Smith. He's a senior listed at 6 foot, 190 pounds. They do a great job blocking at the line. You see, having hit. He's not he's got a big. You see here the quarterback rolling out here. It's not like it's a perfect ball where. He just did a great job rolling out and got it to his big receiver. Made it kind of look easy a little bit. It's Grant Smith's first reception on the for the Vikings. That's what cramps being attended to. Rain has ended. Humidity remains. Always got to stay hydrated even though it's raining, you know. Stay stretched out. And amino acids start building up. Very senior over getting some Words of wisdom from Steve Chanel will be bringing the play in once the injured player is attended to. And the entire offensive unit will come over to Coach Chanel. Kudos again to the crowd for hanging in here despite that rain in the first half. Loveland student section making their presence known. So bad for all the youth football players and cheerleaders that showed up for youth night tonight. They gathered up at their park just the other end of the field here. And fortunately, the lightning delay and uncertainty surrounding that forced those events to be canceled. That's always fun for the youth players to come out and get to walk onto the field. Yeah. Cheerleaders get to cheer with their varsity counterparts down on the track. Always a fun time. Always a chore for the PA announcer that has to advertise all those teams. Right, if it's name by name. <laughs> Loveland's got a strong youth football program in their community, so I'm sure there have been a lot of teams. I don't think they introduce every player, but they definitely right. introduce each head coach and grade level and uh, cheerleading coach. Oh, a lot of names to call out in a short amount of time. And the player is still being attended to down around the 20-yard line. Huddle. Defensive unit. Their coaching staff. I mean, they're just stretching them out, right? Does that mean there's a. Yeah, it looked like a. So I'm surprised they haven't just brought them over to the sideline, too. They're still working. 
I mean, if he's hurt, it's different. But it's just... Stayed at Holiday Inn Express last night, so it doesn't make me very smart at the moment. But uh, can't tell if it's a cramp or an injury at this point. I mean, to your point, if it was a cramp, you think they'd have him up off the field by now. He did, and as for a towel, and kind of using that as a uh, something to put in his mouth and chew on. There, you see the injured player getting up. It's number nine, Natron Webster. That's going to be a big loss for Logan. Walking on his own power. See how it looks like cramp. Yeah, not a noticeable limp, so I'm sure we'll see him back out there in a couple of plays. Hmm. Now he gets a few The whole time there. All right, so Heimersberg with the ball at the 18 yard line. His first down. You tell number one's getting a little tired. Obviously, he's had a lot of carries tonight. You can see the penetration right now. Nick Owens with the tackle for the Tigers and Zion Lewis. So almost brought down in the backfield there. Still a loss there. Owens held on to reinforcements arrived. So yeah, a loss of about two. He's up second and 12, maybe second and 13. And they're perfectly fine with that. Yeah, continues to roll. out to the bottom, otherwise that tight formation. I'm used to seeing a swing team motion. Call goes to Lewis on the right side. Can't quite get the edge. He's forced out of bounds by Pop. I don't think he tried to stay in bounds, to be honest with you. I'm sure. I mean, I don't blame him if he did. Nice blocking. See Pop engage. They're finally dragging Lewis down. Third and two. What do you do? Do you run it or catch yep. Lovell sleeping? In? I mean, they did throw Maybe a couple a times, but I like that old clock running. And if not, do that QB sneak because he's getting about seven yards. Yep. Carry on that QB sneak. Yep, nobody split out. You're right. Lindsay <laughs> on the carry. Like that, I mean, <laughs> into the end zone for a touchdown. So great telegraph of the play call, Coach Frank Edwards. <laughs> Longzi just about what a 12-yard touchdown run. I mean, I, I, I'm confused. on if you see a replay here, I mean, he's just not even getting touched. I mean, I, I think they're so used to him just handing it off to the fullback, they're forgetting that he has the ball. I'd run that play on first down a couple times. So the scores come about four minutes apart for Vongzi, whose last score was at 6.09. Extra point is good. 15 of 15. So here you see what Frank was talking about. I mean, he's not like he's a little guy, you know. He's. Uh, I mean, nobody hit him high. There was there was a couple arms flailing at his shins and his feet. And that's happened a couple times. I'm that's saying at least lot. like yeah. three or four times. As long as his third touchdown run of the night, according to my notes. Jerkins had one. Lewis had one, but Longsy with three now. It's a couple of three yard runs and a Four-yard touchdown run. So yeah, you get inside the five, it's Vongsy time. Yeah, I'm hearing a couple more points. It'll be the clock going to be running. So okay, so Bailey back set up to kick, which we really didn't have to need it anyway because the clock's been running anyway. Amherstburg <laughs> wants to get a win, get out of here, get back home, start getting ready for Huber Heights Wayne next week. That'll be a tough one. Mm -hmm. We're talking during the lightning delay. Wayne's kind of the cold rain of the Dayton area. They seem to reload every year. Deep kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15 yard line. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Scrum is going to move forward over the 31 yard line. So Liam Hamill. Getting his money's worth tonight, huh? Yeah, he is. He 
He's already looking a little tired on all those run plays. It's nice to go out and take a kickoff return. I know. Final humanity, right? <laughs> Good field position for Lovell, though. I mean, they need to answer here. I think it goes without saying. Falls on their own 37 yard line. Receiver to the top and the bottom. Motion. Pitch to Hamill. It's going to be blown up for maybe a yard, but probably no gain. Yeah. It's not. Uh, he just had to kick off, too. I mean, yeah. you've got to be. It's just. Anybody would be tired, you know, after. That's as tough for me to make that play call. And he just had the kickoff return. But it's still early in the season. Well, we'll call it second and 10. It's maybe second and 11. It's early, but sooner or later, some of these youngsters are going to have to step right. up, right, on the offensive line and well, give their skilled players some time. There's a nice little cutback for a good gainer. <laughs> Watch him dart through that hole, lower shoulder. Third and five. Here we go back to Hamill again. Yeah, you can tell by his body language. It. Oh, pass play. Quick pass. In traffic. And that will is complete. It, but it is. And it is it first. Yeah, that's going to be a first down, not even a measurement. They earned it. Yeah. First pass. Good play call. Gave the guys some confidence. That's why I mean, you know, hey, this, let me see you try. And, you know, if it was incomplete, I'm still happy you tried. <laughs> Boy, into traffic. Just a laser of a throw. Nice job by the love on offense. First down. Their own 46. Now they go back to the pass play. Or to the run play, excuse me. Sam Hamill's going to get out to about midfield. Back on the play by Aiden Murphy. He's a sophomore for the Vikings. You can see by him, he, he's getting to that stage of all those hits. It's going to, a matter of time, that body is yeah. going to let you know here. Find some other weapons. You can see him in the backfield. Just, I mean, any breath he can take, trying to get. Only week three, not even got into conference play in the ECC yet, which looks to be absolutely brutal this year. Right back to him. Find some room on the left side before finally being pushed out of bounds. The number 31 of Miami for Jamal Evans. Well, Coach Crayford's going to ride. Liam Hamill, as far as he'll take him, right? Yeah. Get that right. Kick off returns and everything else, too. Just like that, it's the end of the third quarter. He needed that. He was like, almost like, oh, thank God. 35 <laughs> to 7 in the third. So, good quarter. Seven lead at halftime. Only grown. There you say you see a look at our ICRC TV replay schedule for our Spectrum and Cincinnati Bell Phi Optics customers. You can always find our programming on demand at our website, icrctv.com. icrctv.com. A special welcome to our viewers from Lovell and Miamisburg tuning in to the replay of this game. Sims Township, one of our ICRC communities. Obviously, a lot of those students fall into the Lovell School District. We had to add the Lovell Tigers to our ICRC communities and make them a regular stop on our athletic tours around the city. Let's nice have another ECC school. Mm -hmm. Good football in ECC right now. Milford was trailing Fairmont. Played in the game by a touchdown. Speaking of the ACC. Run up the middle. Right back to him. Again. Yeah. He got field in the morning. Oh, he's. I mean, it's a Division II school. I'm thinking. Gotta have some. 
Fresh. Freshman's out there. But it'll make him stronger in the year. I guess he's just building for the, the long haul here. About five guys have carried the ball for Loving this year, besides the quarterback, Riley Hamill, to win a pregame preparations. But uh, not a lot on the receiving end either. Only four guys receptions for the Tigers. Timeout on the field. Clock stops at 11.24 in the fourth quarter. Second and one for the Tigers. Yeah, here. and it's going to keep it designed. <laughs> Ran about 30 yards to gain one or two, <laughs> I think. The quarterback, of course, Riley Hamill. Couldn't quite get the edge on the right side, but he does get the first down. That's the important part. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he's going to come right at you. Why is he lost backwards? <laughs> he really lost his block there on the right side, if you saw that. That's what he was looking for, and that's why he continued to run horizontally instead of vertically. That's why he's coming out. He's got blood on him, or his blood. Yep. Down 28. Tough road to hoe, but not, not over. Well, we had a substitution. Oh, can't take that out with me. Keep that on the bench. So. Now they're like, well, so who are we going to give it to? I mean, <laughs> who's going to run the ball? There you see, leveling in the red zone. Desperately needing a score. Trying to claw their way back in this game. It's gonna be a pass play, nope. Oh yeah, yes it is. Nice pass. Pass is complete. For number 41, Austin Loader. Great job by the quarterback. Riley Hamill to roll out to his right side. Release that ball under pressure as you're going to see here. Steps up. That's his big guy lopping yeah. it up to him. Yeah, ready to go up to get that one, big fella. First and goal for the Tigers. Hamill gets up ended. Tackled inside the five. Liam Hamill, that is. So, got the blood wiped off of him and just momentarily catches his breath and right back out on the field. Must have shown the coaches something in practice this week. Seems to be the only option they're electing to go with at the moment. And they have some big receivers. Second and goal. Shot of the backside of that formation. Quick snap. They go back to Liam Hamill again. Still not in. Liam Hamill's off here. Look the one. Inside the one. Of he's tired. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he's earned his stripes well, today. Like 38 to 44. Yeah. Maybe a little pinky jam there. Toying with the <laughs> ring and pinky finger on his left hand. Motion across the formation. Liam Hamill into the end zone, and essentially untouched. Well, Liam Hamill did all the heavy lifting on that one, save for the one pass reception. He's rewarded with the touchdown for the Loveland Tigers. A two yard touchdown run. 
defense, but player engaged in there. He was clearly in the end zone at that point. Just setting himself up for a foolish penalty. Right? Yeah, you got him in the phase. But there's eight, so eight minutes, eight, 15 left here. And time not on the Tiger side, especially with the stingy Miami Berg offense. Kick is up and good. <laughs> Bounce back by Lovell, but maybe too little too late. Which is interesting, obviously, the rain had an impact. In the first half, we saw three pass attempts, none completed by Lovell, none from Amiesburg. And then we open up the playbook a little bit here now that the rain has subsided in the second half. Footballs are still pretty wet as well. Doesn't seem to be any problems, not having any turnovers. Mother Nature just not a football fan, apparently, with this weather we've experienced last week and this week. Thankfully, it was a brief lightning delay before the game started, not the middle of the game. Oh, like wow. So last week, which caused many games to reconvene on Saturday morning or Saturday evening. Lightning did not, however, affect Loveland up in Lebanon last week. The storm system was inside the 275 loop. Clay Harrison got hit. Yeah, I they said it was all that down, down southwest. Like sure. Well, they canceled the game. The cold front blew through, started blowing banners off the fence and everything. Onside kick attempt coming up here for Loveland. Right in, yeah, deflected, but hauled back in by Miamisburg. So, right idea, but just a little bit too much foot on that one. Yeah, hands team. There's a replay. Slogan. Harmsworth, the freshman. 21 point lead for Miamisburg. You probably would still have a 15 in this place. You can still cut the scores so and you don't have a turnover. It's in the middle. Just want to get this clock out and get out of here, get on the bus and go on. We'd already be packed up and heading home by now if we hadn't had the lightning delays. Yeah, you're right about that. And now this was. All these kids are going to have an early morning wake up for the JV game tomorrow up in Miamisburg. That's good for them. <laughs> They will be here early. Too. Yeah. Oh, love them kids. When you wake up to travel up there. Got an hour bus ride, give or take. May not be too bad on a Saturday morning, traffic wise, but it is a school bus. Right. <laughs> Just make sure you get home with some sleep. It's always the chore on a Friday night, huh? Mm hmm. That's when the discipline has to kick in. Yeah, there's players last week, right? You know, had to come back and finish football on yeah, Saturday morning. Go hang out with the guys. There's a pitch. Number 23, John Yerkins. All kinds of room on the right side. And One defender to beat. An oh, attempt at a shoestring it, tackle doesn't work. And into the end zone. Boy, that was a valiant effort by Remy George, but just got there a second too late. Both sides of the field here, you can see just looks like they tie arm tackles and next thing you know, arm tackle, miss tackles, and there's a footprints here. Yep. Last yep. effort try here. And, yep. and Remy George comes in and makes contact, but it's pushed late. him right into the end zone. So a huge touchdown run. By number 23, John Yerkins. Point attempt is good. Kickers getting their work in tonight, huh? I'm doing a good job. It's an A plus. Yeah, we're gonna, that was probably around the 45, right? We'll call that a 55 yard touchdown. Here. 
22 to 14. Big lead. If you're Miamisburg, I'd like to kill some clock with an extra score. <laughs> Not right a bad second option. Well, just uh, unfortunate for Loveland. They're finally showing some signs of life offensively. Being carried by Liam Hamill and defense gives up 50 yard touchdown run. Definitely the quickest possession of the night. Yeah. Far and away. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Miamisburg once they get into league play. As we mentioned, they have Huber Heights Wayne on tap next week. I believe that's at home at Clinton Miamisburg. So it will be interesting to keep an eye on them from a distance. See what they do in the league play. Kicks can be fielded at the 20 yard line. Blocking never quite developed. It's just a scrum that's gonna move forward about three yards. Out to the 33 yard line. So Liam Hamill can get in his number called on the kickoff. I think I have one of his runners coming in if I'm guessing. Well, there's pros and cons to that, I guess. You want to give these Get youngsters live game experience. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a change at quarterback. It's going to be number seven taking over. Beckard Bebout. I'm no probably getting that name wrong, so apologies to him and his family. Tony Blake cuts back across the formation. A nice gain of about six yards on the cutback. There's Reese Hatfield on the carry. He's a sophomore. He's a junior. Listed as a running back. Now we have an injured Tiger who's going to try to get up to his feet, but having a hard time putting pressure on that right leg, but he'll shake it off. Come off for a play. Attended to by the trainers. But a first down for the Loveland Tigers. So bring the reserves in and all of a sudden start moving the football. Battle the reserves. Yeah, I was going to say that he's with like the reserve reserves in at this point as well. Still some new formations there. Same. Looks like the same. Well, the story in the newspaper done in the preseason on the ECC preview by a friend of ICRC, Scott Springer, of the Cincinnati Choir, was that numbers were down last year in the Loveland program. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little bit of a rebuilding process, and we're seeing that tonight, especially now getting some of these youngsters an opportunity to shine and get live game reps. Never know when your number's gonna get called. Play is slow to develop, and really never turns into a whole lot of anything. The offensive line has oh, really seemed to Get much established there as Haas is brought down. It's going to be third and eight now for Loveland. And Morrison, number 48, it is a junior tight end, comes out onto the field for the Tigers. That formation, one receiver to the top, to hand off to the bottom. Cut back through the hole. It's going to be well short of the first down, even though he crosses over into Vikings territory. Just not many passing plays. I mean, I don't know how that works with having young underclassmen. I don't know how long the coach, what kind of, he bring, you know what I'm saying, like what his play calling, 
It's a lot of the, you know, I don't know how that works here. You know, it's my first game here. But. Well, in this offense, it's, you know, you practice against your defense all the time, and not that Amesburg doesn't know a thing about the wing tee, but it's good to go against some different bodies. We'll see how they react in different situations compared to the way your own defense. His coach, it's Ben Wesley on the carry for the Tigers. Here comes the punt unit. Actually, that was four down, excuse me. So a turnover on downs. You see that one. Okay, Miamisburg with another short field. You gotta call something, right? <laughs> well, they're allowed to pass if they want to. Uh, fourth down, I'm not sure that's a play call I would have gone for. It's just even to practice with the reserves. Yeah, in the middle of the field. Hand off up the middle. Hunter Dye, number 34, gets his number called for the Vikings. Ball still barely in Miami's third territory. It's second and eight. Nose of the ball just shy of midfield. Offensive line didn't help a whole lot there. 430 remaining in this game. Motion across the formation. Yep. Seen the swing tee a lot, but sweep coming across, right? Fox is still in at quarterback, in case you were wondering for the Vikings. Really, they don't have a backup? Is that the same quarterback? Yeah, same. Wow. Fogs is number nine. Yep. Huh. Yep. Falk here that Kinda time. Kind of surprising. team. Braden Barr. I would hate for him to twist an ankle on these boys. Valid point. So penalties assessed on Miami's bird. Creates second and 19, so. Yeah, Boggs is gonna stay in. Still in, number nine. Don't think we're gonna see him handling the ball much, just handing it off. One of his younger teammates. Keeping him fresh for tomorrow morning. Come on, Marco! <laughs> Come on, Marco! I think he's out of eligibility after this game, right? Wow, great run that time to get back. When they lost in the penalty and then some in, yeah. More importantly, stay in bounds. One to carry. Big reserve guy. Yeah. 18 the run. Freshman listed as a hunter and defensive end, but big old freshman. Wow. Six two one seven. Right future. First down. The ball now down to the thirty-six yard line, pushing the three-minute mark of the contest. Go right back to the run. It's DeMarco Johnson, another freshman. Excuse me, the wrong roster. It's Noah Bell. So next week, Friday night football. Hit the road again. It's Sycamore at Mason. Deer Park at Ready. Godfather Steve Parker being the call up in Mason. Bill Bretts. CHL contest down in Reading. And into league play. Nice run. Top of the formation is going to be a fresh set of downs. It's Braden Barr, Jr., 6'175 pounds on the carry, and an injured Tiger out at the 20 yard line. 
Johnson will get away from an arm attack there. He's finally brought down. And that's not a creep. That's a pretty bad one. Pretty exasperated look on his face. His body language, you can see there. Portland student sections thinned a little, but most of them hanging in there. Offensive and defensive units will huddle up with their coach and staff while the injured players tended to. Some cramps do hurt bad. He's in a lot of pain, you know, right? Grabbing all that face mask. And Especially if you have never had one. I remember the first time I had one when I was in high school. And summer basketball kids, I was like, what's going on with my leg? I couldn't walk. <laughs> Fell down. I said, what's going on? It's just a cramp. You need to drink some water. Like after like the fifth game. Yeah. Got water the night before, right? Mm-hmm. As I said, it's been a hot week here in Cincinnati. So. Injured player is number 15, Zach Owens. He's a junior. Let's see him up. 18 remaining. This one is pretty much in the book for the Vikings, but they continue to drive with the ball in the red zone on the level and 16 yard line. So Coach Chanel likes to do. He's going to continue the youth movement, give some guys some touches, or try to punch this one in the end zone. Maybe a combination of both. Why is he still in at quarterback? Oh, put up there yeah. tackle. Yep, sure did. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Number 18, Braden Bars had quite a series for himself here. Yes, he did. About an 18-yard touchdown run. I mean, it was just a run up the middle and just a couple missed tackles. And, you know, hey, he earned it. Time, right? He's like, I'm going to keep on going. Might even call a timeout, try to get him. <laughs> <laughs> timeout, timeout. Ice, ice the extra point, huh? <laughs> Kick this up. And good. 49 to 14. This has been quite the offensive performance by the Vikings tonight. Out of Division I up in southwest Montgomery County. Go on the road. Get a big win. Starting conference play for that team. As we mentioned, love on the home with Withrow next week for homecoming. Augensburg with Huber Heights Wayne. The Withrow Tigers too. So it's the Tigers. Yeah, Battle Tigers. Tigers. Maybe the Tigers should have been tried by them so they can have a Tiger. That should be a Hope they got a fryer for That's a reason. Yeah. I feel like the magic. Try to those costumes. Student athlete inside sweating, and you get the rain like tonight. Humidity. I'm just throwing in the closet for next week. Who's the tiger in this room? Oh, man. I will not be devoted to any of your senior superlatives. Try the tiger next week. He's a wet tiger. <laughs> All right, feels like gain some weight tonight. He's like, run the ball. We need to get out of this thing. <laughs> Kicks fielded inside the 20. He gets an A for effort, too. He's, hey. Parkland Sharkey with the return for the Loveland Tigers. So Loveland will get another crack on offense with 152 remaining. So the clock just start. How does that work? Because if clock, I'm not sure what's only a minute left, do they just let it go or one play and it's done? Huh. I think it stops on the change of possessions. 
haven't encountered it so far this year. It's a little rusty on the roof. Maybe the first play. I mean, that'll be. Well, we'll have to find out as the ball's just about to be snapped. Hand off up the middle. This has been the case often tonight. It's not a whole lot of room there. Even with the reserves in battling. Second and eight after a gain of two. Let's back up Tigers. Do again want to extend our thank you to the Level and Athletics Department staff for accommodating us to bring you this broadcast tonight in their press box. I'm here at Tiger Stadium. Our producer tonight, Dean Lowry, a Loveland alum, so he's excited to be back as well. Stomping grounds. You might know something about the Tiger suit. <laughs> Sworn to secrecy. It's usually the way those things work. Mm -hmm. Under a minute to go now. Yeah, yeah, pushing and shoving away from the ball again. Don't try to press anybody with a silly penalty at this point in the game, right? That's for sure. Who has Reese Hatfield on the carry? Likely to be the last play of the game as we approach 30 seconds. The receivers foot to the bottom. Run up the middle. A whole lot there. Some pushing and shoving continues after the whistle. Austin Haas on the carry, tackled by Nate Hazel. That'll do it here. Indeed, it will. Your final score from Loveland Tiger Stadium, the Miamisburg Vikings 49, Loveland Tigers 14. Frank, parting thoughts. Great job by Miamisburg. Ran the ball very well and did what they wanted to do. Had big, big game next week. Loveland's got to open up and try to salvage something that's season starting out right now. Well, we'll see you from Mason and Ready next week. For our producer, Dean Lowry, partner Frank Edwards, I'm Glenn Olson. You've been watching Friday Night Football on ICRC TV Sports.